Awesome, so we've got an enemy that is shooting at us, okay. Just like that. I just wanted to firstly say thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel. Um, we got over 50 subscribers from the previous video and that is just wow. Overwhelmingly positive feedback, so thank you guys. This tutorial is going to go over how we could create an enemy that shoots us. And to start that off I'm going to get right in. We're going to go into our enemy controller, okay? And we're going to create a new enum. So this um, enum is going to be enemy type, okay? And we can have a melee enemy and we can also have a ranged enemy. And make sure we put a semicolon on that. Cool. So, now inside our enemy controller class, we also need to define a public enemy type for the enemy, and this can be our um, enemy type, okay? And so we basically only want to do different things depending on uh, whether we when we're attacking. So if we're a ranged enemy we want to shoot a bullet. So right now this is used for um, a melee enemy so I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to add a switch statement depending on if we're a melee or ranged. Okay so switch enemy type case uh, enemy type dot melee. Okay and I'm just going to paste this in and break. Cool. And now case enemy type dot ranged. Okay. So whoop. So in here um the first thing we want to do is we want to, just like we did within our player, we want to instantiate a bullet. So I'm going to call a game object bullet is equal to instantiate uh, bullet prefab. And this is going to be at our transform dot position and our quaternion dot identity. Okay. And make sure that is as a game object. Okay. So didn't understand that. I'm also going to expand this a little bit. Now we also need to make sure we've got our bullet prefab. So if we go down, make sure we type in our public game object bullet prefab. Okay. So now we can grab our bullet and we can get our uh, bullet controller and we're going to call a method that we haven't actually defined yet. So we're going to get the player and then within our bullet control we'll be able to uh, shoot in the correct direction based on where the player is. Okay, so we can put in the player.transform. Okay, and it's going to error until we have created this method. I'm also going to grab our bullet.addComponent and we're going to add a rigid body 2D. And we're going to set the gravity scale. Make that zero. Okay, and we also want to define or set a variable. So we're going to grab our in our bullet controller as well. We want to check is enemy bullet. I'm going to set that equal to true. Okay, um, finally, we want to start a coroutine, and that's our cooldown because, yeah. Oop. I'm going to start our coroutine. I'm going to call it cooldown. There we go. Should call the method. Awesome. So in our bullet controller, we firstly need to define a public ball. And this is going to be is enemy bullet. Okay. It's going to be equal to false. Now, in here, whoop. So in here, we need to check whether. Um, it is an enemy bullet or not, okay? If it's not an enemy bullet, 
then what we want to do is we want to transform the scale based on our game controller's size okay but if it is we want to have a constant size we don't want it to change that wouldn't be fair on the player <laughs> so um, what we're also going to need is we're going to need to make use of an update method so void update <clears throat> and we can set that to a capital now in the update we need to check whether um, it is an enemy bullet or not and if it is we're firstly going to define a current position and a last position so that is basically going to grab our current position okay and we're going to check whether it's equal to the last position and if it is equal to the last position, so if it's not moving towards the target anymore, if it's reached the destination, we're going to destroy the game object. So to do that, I'm firstly going to define a couple of private vector2 variables. So private vector2 last position and private vector2 uh, current position. Okay. Now if it is an enemy bullet we want to set our current position equal to our transform dot position okay then we're going to start our transform dot position and we're going to make it equal to a vector 2 dot move towards and we're going to move from our transform dot position to our player position okay whoop our player position and that is going to be over 5f times by time dot delta time okay but we don't have a player pause either so we can also define a private whoop, private bleh, private vector 2 player pause make sure that's vector um, and now that should move towards fine, but we don't actually have the player because we haven't defined our get player. So to do that, all we have to do is we can go public void get player. Okay, and we're going to take in a transform of our player, and we're going to set player position equal to player dot position. Okay. Alrighty, so under here we're going to check whether our current position is equal to our last position. And if it is, we want to get rid of our game object. We don't want it anymore. Alrighty. And lastly, we're going to set our last position equal to our current position. Okay. So hopefully this makes a bit of sense. So this bullet will now work for the enemy and the player which is pretty cool it's pretty dynamic all right so let's go into our editor and set up a new enemy type so if we just duplicate this and i'm going to call it ranged enemy so now we can change our enemy type to ranged uh, we can set our range to 10 we can set our attack range to 5 um, the bullet speed, probably set that to 5 as well. And we also want our bullet prefab, so we can drag that in. Okay, awesome. So, let's also just move it down here. Okay. Now, if we run the game, let's have a look. Got our player. Okay, shoot him. Cool. And he's just shot himself. So, what we need to do is go back into our uh, Visual Studio Code or whatever editor you're using. And in our bullet controller, we need to check whether we are not an enemy bullet. Okay? So, if it's not an enemy bullet, 
then that's fine. We also need to do an end. There we go. Now we need to also check if our call dot tag is equal to player and we are an enemy enemy bullet. And if we are, then we can grab our call dot game object. Oh sorry, no. We can just call our game controller dot damage play and we can damage it for one point. And then we may destroy our game object. Alrighty. So if we go back into our editor now and we run the game, we should. Whoop. Awesome. So we've got an enemy that is shooting at us. Okay. Just like that. So it's grabbing whatever position and it's going to shoot. Sweet. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you found it useful and gained something new from it. Um, if you did, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below, and be sure to uh, subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks.